Don't you just love that Disney plot twist villain who you thought was nice the whole time and then it turns out they were evil all along and Disney did just such a good job executing it? Yeah. I love King Candy too. Oh, you thought I was going to talk about Hans in this video? Oh, well, I am, but he's not the villain and I'll tell you why. Hey guys, I'm Libby and welcome to Punzi's Palace. Be sure to hit subscribe down below if you haven't already so you can join in on the Disney fun and everything else that I do. So I've had a problem with Hans being the villain from the first time that I saw Frozen. When I first saw it, when he was introduced, I knew he was the villain immediately because I knew it's too early for Anna to be so happy in this movie and they already did the typical romantic love song and you can't do that as the third song in the movie. You at least have 10 songs to get through and you need to put it somewhere at like seven or eight area. I knew as soon as that happened, okay, yeah, there's something wrong with him because he he's too good to be true and this is a Disney story and he kept being nice. He and Anna get along fairly well. He's very nice and very courteous to her when they first meet. He dances with her and, and talks with her all night. And who knows, maybe he was also desperate for love like she was. And when she goes to find her sister, he takes charge and he makes sure that the secondary villain stays in place. The secondary villain is this guy, Duke of Wesselton, Weaseltown, that dude. And he's the person you're supposed to think is the villain the whole time. He's just such a poorly done villain, like such a poorly done red herring as well. Because Disney, you give us people like Jafar and Ursula, and Maleficent. And we're supposed to believe that this guy is the villain? Yeah, no, I'm not buying it. But Hans also hands out blankets and cloaks, and he offers clog. I don't know, it, it's hot, and apparently people tend to like it in Norway. And he seems to just be nice to everyone. And then there's a switch, and he turns all evil, and I just, I don't buy it because it comes from out of nowhere. And yeah, you could argue he's putting on a show the entire time to be in everybody's good graces so that he is able to take over the throne. But it doesn't add up because of one particular shot. It's when he smiles at Anna under the boat. No one is around. So he's putting on the show for nobody. And he smiles at Anna with that loving look. And it's so genuine and so sweet. He is giving her Flynn eyes. The Flynn eyes that he looks at Rapunzel with, and you can't tell me, Disney, that those eyes mean something different now in this movie. Mm -mm, mm -mm. So, no. There's another actual villain that is hiding in plain sight and is much worse, but is also much more intricate and complex. It makes for a much more compelling story, and it's the trolls. So let's do some background here. According to Wikipedia, a troll is a being in Scandinavian folklore, including Norse mythology. They are described as beings who dwell in isolated rocks, mountains, or caves, live together in small family units, and are rarely helpful to human beings. So already, right there, why would these trolls be helpful to the royal family with Elsa at the very beginning of the movie? Also in Scandinavian folklore, trolls display a habit of erg tag thing? or kidnapping, and they do this by literally taking Kristoff. And also in the movie, we see that the trolls possess the power to change people's memories when they change Anna's memories of Elsa's magic. So basically they have the power to change people's minds. And who's to say that they don't use this for more diabolical purposes than saving Anna from ever knowing that her sister has powers, which she finds out later anyway, so it's all for naught. They might even change Kristoff's mind to make him think that he doesn't have parents anymore and stays with them. Or even changing his parents' mind to make them forget they even had a child. And in all my reading, of fairy tales and Disney folklore. Kidnapping children is like a big red flag saying this person is evil. Uh, Mother Gothel and Rumpelstiltskin, anyone? What do the trolls being evil and kidnapping Kristoff and everything have to do with Hans? The answer lies in their absolute love and devotion to Kristoff. They took him in because they thought he was cute and they grow to love this one human and their love is actually what makes them to do all of the terrible things that happen in the movie. So we meet the trolls a second time when we see Anna, Kristoff, Olaf, and Sven go and meet them to help Anna with her frozen heart. They greet Kristoff, they're super excited that he's back, but they're also super duper excited when they think that he brought home a girl. So without listening to either of them, they try to fix them up immediately to be together. And then Kristoff yells, Jeez engaged to someone else, okay? 
So instead of asking him, asking Anna how she feels or anything like that, they instead immediately go into a huddle where they plan to get Hans out of the way. They literally spell it out for you. They say it's a minor thing and that this quote engagement is a flex arrangement and say get the fiance out of the way and the whole thing will be fixed. It's right there. They literally are perfect villains because every villain spells out their evil plan in song and they do it. Then they say that Anna is suffering from a frozen heart and only an act of true love can thaw a frozen heart. An act of true love, which could be a lot of things, but they first suggest a true love's kiss perhaps? Trying to plant that idea in Anna's mind and also in Kristoff's mind to be like, hey, you guys should kiss because you guys could be true love's first kiss or whatever. But instead, Kristoff, being the good person he is, Kristoff is not the bad guy in any of this. He's just, you know, their motivation. Kristoff suggests that they take Anna back to Hans immediately. Anna, we've got to get you back to Hans. And then we cut to Hans. But in this cut, we don't know how much time has passed, and I believe that the trolls decided to take action at this point to get Hans out of the way. I think that the trolls went to see Hans and they changed his mind. And so the trolls, they go, they use their mind powers, and they change Hans's mind by altering his memories. I don't think they do too much, I think they just do little things of changing his mind and just implant the idea that he is no longer going to be in love with Anna and that he has to be a jerk to Anna. I think they just want him to be mean to Anna so she doesn't love him anymore and will instead love Kristoff. And this explains him so much better in all of his actions than if he was just bad on his own. And here is why it fixes literally every plot hole because it explains how he was nice and super helpful throughout the entire front half of this movie. And then we get the troll scene and then things start to get iffy. So when he goes to approach Elsa and take her down, that could be him putting on a show being like, don't be the monster they fear you are. But also it's probably not. He has no qualms against Elsa, neither do the trolls, so they're like, yeah, just get her back home because that'll make Anna happy. If Anna's happy, maybe she'll love Kristoff. And if he was really wanting to kill Elsa, why would he make the crossbow shooter shoot the chandelier when he had a clear aim at Elsa? If he was really trying to get her out of the way, he would have let him shoot her and been like, oh no, I couldn't get to her in time. Oh, it was so sad and so terrible, Anna, and now I'm gonna kill you too. He could have done that and he did it. He looked up, saw the chandelier, and immediately thought, yes, that's what I'm gonna make him point at instead of shooting Elsa. So why does he shoot the chandelier? Elsa will probably move out of the way, maybe she'll knock herself out, and we can just take her back easy peasy lemon squeezy because she has incredibly powerful ice powers, we can't overtake her. Then we get to the castle where he's talking to Elsa and trying to talk her down, tell her, hey, get rid of this eternal winter, and all he really says in this exchange, he doesn't say anything mean or anything like he's gonna kill her or anything like that because he totally could have just taken a dagger in there and been like oh I killed her in self-defense she was gonna kill me and everybody would pretty much be on his side because they all think she's a villain right now but he just says I will try to let them release you and then Anna returns home and they are left alone and that's when the reveal happens the big deep reveal notice how he hasn't really been evil or anything like that until this point where he reveals everything to Anna. He doesn't kiss her, says he doesn't love her, actually implies that no one loves her, leaves her to die, and then he goes to put a death sentence on Elsa. So wait, why is he trying to kill Elsa now? You just had a few opportunities where he could have done that. The trolls, I don't think, want to kill Elsa, but the trolls know that Kristoff is going to be back on his way to save Anna and actually thaw her frozen heart. And Elsa, they believe, can pretty much handle herself. His memories being altered, I think, went a step too far. Memories are very traumatic. We see this with Elsa. Her memory of her hitting her sister at a very young age is super traumatic and it stays with her throughout her entire life. So them going in and changing memories, those can stay with you and make your actions and your behavior change so much that I think as soon as he started being mean to her, it just snowballed into him being a super, super big villain wanting to kill Elsa and completely take over the throne. And it just kept going and kept going to make him seem like this huge, really big, bad villain and make it so believable that she will never love him. And now she's going to love Kristoff instead. Snowballed even further because then he goes to get a sword to go and kill Elsa in the snow. If the trolls are really the villain and their whole concept is to get Kristoff to kiss Anna so that that's the true love's kiss, that's the act of true love that's gonna thaw her frozen heart and she'll end up happily with him, well we all know 
That doesn't happen. So why does Anna's act of true love for her sister, not Kristoff, thaw her heart? Because Anna chose to save her sister instead of Kristoff. And I think the troll's magic has something to do with Elsa's magic. And that's why they know so much about frozen hearts. And that's why their parents took them to see the trolls at the very beginning when she first got struck with the ice magic. And so as soon as they see that she is completely frozen, her frozen heart has taken over, and they see that she's technically died, they understand, oh, oh no, oh no, 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 no. Now Kristoff can't be with her because she's dead. So let's see, um, yeah, we'll make that, that can be an act of true love because she loves her sister. And I think that's why it takes so long for Anna to actually unfreeze. It's a good while. And I think this makes the magic and the lore of the story of Frozen so much more intricate and better because the troll's magic being linked to Elsa's magic gives so much more background about where Elsa's powers maybe could have come from. Yeah, in Frozen 2, we get a little bit more background about where they probably came from with like the gift from the spirits and Atta Holland and all of that. But the spirits and the trolls are both magical beings. Who's to say that they're not somehow linked together. I feel like it would make for a much better story if Elsa's powers were given or somehow involved the trolls and actually would link Frozen 1 and Frozen 2 together so much better than just Frozen 2 being kind of a whole different story and going off on its own thing and basically being Avatar. But then there's another question of why doesn't Olaf's act of true love, lighting the fire and almost melting, why doesn't that save Anna? But this theory has an answer for that too. At this point when Olaf lights the fire, Anna hasn't said out loud that she loves Kristoff yet. And so that's why his act of true love there doesn't save her and doesn't thaw her because they're like, we don't want her to be saved by a snowman. We want her to be saved by Kristoff so then they can be romantic and in love and she'll end up with him. That's their entire goal. Kristoff and Anna have to be together. And that's why they do the bad stuff of changing Hans's mind and making him into like a little terror demon robot thing. Also, when the winter is gone, I feel like Hans has kind of come to from his magical mind warp. All the things he says are, Anna, but she froze your heart. He could have totally said, like, Anna, I thought I killed you. I thought you were dead. But no, he just said a fact of like, Anna, I thought your heart was frozen. Kind of picking some pieces from what he might have remembered. And all that happens after that is she says, the only frozen heart here is yours and punches him off the boat. Not giving him any time to explain. He totally could have been like, I don't remember anything. All I remember is bits and pieces. And there's this weird troll guy who came and like, booted my mind. We don't need a twist villain to make it a good movie and to make the villain be good. I think the trolls forcing true love to happen would be such a unique idea for a villain to have. The trolls have good intentions, but they just have corrupt means of getting to those ends that they want. So it would have such a good contrast between the good and evil in the story, where it's somebody like Elsa who seems to be evil by everybody, but is actually good, and then somebody who seems to be good, but is actually bad with the trolls. And you could even have the trolls like figure out like, oh my gosh, that's not what we meant to do at all. And they could have even like a little redemption arc instead of just labeling somebody to be just bad because they're bad. Throughout all of this, this would actually also make me love the song Love is an Open Door as an actual romantic duet song instead of it kind of being the villain song because Hans was just not brainwashed at this point. He was actually genuinely in love with Anna at the beginning. And the actual villain song is Fixer Upper because they're trying to fix up Kristoff and Anna. And to do that, they have to corrupt Hans. All right, guys, that is my theory of why Hans is not the villain and the villain is actually the trolls. Let me know down in the comments below if you agree, if you disagree, if you have any other plot holes you want to discuss from other movies. And also let me know if you like theory type videos like this, looking at the films in a more in-depth analysis like this. Let me know and let me know what other movies you would like me to look at in this sort of way. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe down below for more Disney content like this. Until next time, farewell.